else wish to testify? Okay, we're going to move into work session now. I would ask that, uh, could you try to get her on the phone while council, could you try to get her, uh, I'd like to ask council, Dexter uh, Johnson, Legislative Council, I know you've had an opportunity to reflect and research on this issue. And do you have a recommendation for the Legislative Council Committee at this time on this copyright issue that's properly before the committee? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. And uh, let me begin by frameworking uh, what it is you will uh, be uh, acting on. Uh, ORS 171.275 uh, statutorily authorizes the committee to, but does not require the committee to uh, copyright uh, materials. Um, uh, copyright the Oregon Revised Statute, those parts of the Oregon Re Senator Revised Brown. Statute Thank you. that are um, capable of being copyrighted. And that has been the position of the committee uh, since 1953. However, in light of recent technological developments, in light of uh, the, uh, what the witnesses have uh, described today, uh, while um, and in light of the changes in uh, copyright law uh, coming out of the Feist decision um, that witnesses have described. Um, and also one other, one other thing you should note, uh, there, because of the complexity of describing what it is you're copywriting and the considerable public interest in having open access to the law, um, it is, uh, the office's recommendation that um, you, going forward, disclaim that copyright and um, allow the uh, ORS to be available uh, publicly, both continue, con continuing to sell the printed volumes, but uh, otherwise uh, available to the public without uh, copyright restriction. Recognize Representative Dave Hunt. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So to get a motion on the table for discussion, uh, consistent with that recommendation, I move that the Legislative Council Committee disclaim all copyright in the Oregon Revised Statutes and direct the Legislative Council to take no action to enforce any claim of copyright in the Oregon Revised Statutes. All right. We have before us a motion that reflects the recommendation of the Legislative Council. It's now time for us to have a discussion. Any discussion? Representative Jenny Burdick, please. Senator Jenny Burdick, I'm sorry. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I will support this motion. I think it's a good motion, but it did occur to me some of the discussion was about the um, taxpayer paying for the ORS and whether we're, we're going to be getting, you know, whether we're doing right by the taxpayer on this. And it, it occurred to me as I listened to some of the discussion of how this material is going to be used on some of these sites. It is a legislator who represents 115,000 people. Um, it will be very helpful to me to be able to go into a database and, and in a subject area I'm, le I'm, I'm drafting legislation on and being able to tell very quickly what other states do. Uh, yep. uh, Senator Brown? Yes, Mr. Could, President. Could you sort of go slow out there? You're blowing up the phone on us, please. Could you sort of go slow? Thank you. Sure. Um, and, and so it would be very helpful to be able to go to one place, see what other states are doing, see what the case law is both, both here and elsewhere. So I think that there are going to be other benefits to the taxpayers um, if, you, if you look at the issue more broadly. Thank you. Further discussion? Yes, Representative Rosenbaum, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I do support this motion. I did have a question for Dexter. Um, I wanted to know if um, assuming passage of this motion that the state or legislative council would be pursuing any other kind of licensing agreement, whether it's a Creative Commons license, a traditional license, or any of these other methods that have been described by the witnesses today. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, Representative Rosenbaum, um, no, the effect of this motion would be to um, not thereafter, we would not be pursuing uh, any any further licensing uh, arrangement with any any commercial um, user uh, commercial website operator as well. So a follow up, Mr. Chair. Sure. I I guess my concern continues to be whether then in the public domain are going to be versions of these statutes 
that are less than helpful to the public because they are presented in a way that really is not I mean, I'm, I guess I'm getting closer to this. There is some creativity in commentary on them, but nonetheless, the statutes are the statutes. They exist in a form that we put them out, and that is their official version. So is there going to be any means, in your view, for the public to know that what they're looking at is the, the official most useful version if they try to rely on it? Uh, Representative, uh the office will explore with uh, information systems and the, the technology folks in here at the legislature uh, about this MD5 technology and other digi digital signature requirements and, and see uh, what feasibility um, uh, there is in, in rolling that technology out. In addition, um, certainly uh, the office will, to the extent necessary, um, sure that they are not sure but have discussions with the uh, uh, Oregon Judicial Department and the, the court rules and ensuring that there still is a distinction between uh, the official version of the ORS which which the uh, legislative council committee will produce and uh, and that that is continues to be the official version for uh, formal action thank you thank, thank you, you mr. chair Senator Brown, do you do you are you familiar with the motion that is now before us? I don't know if you were on when the motion was yes. made. Oh. Yes, I am. Do you have any questions about the motion that's before us, Senator Brown? I do not. Thank you. Any further? Go yes, Representative Hunt, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And I think the one other piece following up on Representative Rosenbaum's question uh, that came up in Mr. Forsyth's testimony is is and Dexter promised you to look at whether in fact it is illegal right now to publish inaccurate versions. It's, doesn't seem like it's been an issue much thus far, but that may be one legal route we, we may be wise in taking in, uh, in ensuring accuracy. I, I mean, frankly, this I, I think this this whole issue is a is a tough call for me. I think this is the way to go. Um, I am frankly largely persuaded by the point that Mr. Massey made related to if we don't take this action, we're going to be exposing ourselves and taxpayers to risk on the lawsuit side of the equation, which is about the last place I want to be spending money is is uh, defending us in a lawsuit. Um, but 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 I, I do continue to to think that, that we need to to look very carefully at at, at uh, ways that we are protecting the taxpayers. I my frame of reference on this working in uh, marine transportation my day job, if you are dredging sand on the Columbia River that's considered public land. And if you use it, if you're a city or a county or a nonprofit, you use that sand, there's no cost for it. But if you're using it for profit, if you're selling it for profit, you pay a fee back to the state. And uh, it seems like there's got to be some way. It may, it's a more difficult issue, perhaps, in, uh, in the technological world than it is in, uh, when you're dealing with a physical asset like sand out of the bottom of the river. But uh, I, I still think we need to continue to monitor this so we're not expending significant amounts of money to create, you know, formatting for something that then someone is going and, uh, as, as Representative Richardson said, uh, gaining commerce from that. But for now, I think this is the only way to go. Thank you. Further discussion? Uh, Representative Richardson, please. I'd just like to say that, um, you know, the motion deals with the copyright aspect of the law and it certainly doesn't preclude doing other things to protect mm -hmm. the, the authenticity and veracity of our statutes uh, and I certainly support any movement that makes the laws of Oregon more transparent and more available to the general public and I am excited about the, the ability we already have to research uh, digitally and in my practice we haven't uh, spent $2,300 a month <laughs> actually we never spent that much but we haven't spent a, a lot of money um, since we've had access um, to open source uh, information about statutes and, and other aspects of law, and, and I think that this only will expand that access, and I think that's a good thing. Thank you. Would the committee clerk please call the roll on the motion that's before us? And the motion is that the Legislative Council Committee disclaim all copyright in the Oregon Revised Statutes and direct the Legislative Council to take no action to enhance any claim of copyright in the Oregon Revised Statutes. Representative Rosenbaum? Aye. Representative Richardson? Aye. 
Senator Brown? Aye. Senator Burdick? Aye. Senator Nelson? Aye. Representative Hunt? Aye. And Co Chair Courtney? Uh, yes. The uh, the motion has received a majority vote of the House members on the Legislative Council Committee and a majority members of the Senate members of the Legislative Council Committee. Therefore, the motion is carried. Anything further to be discussed?